Outlaw Sports is brought to you by Molson Canadian, made from Canada, and Rocky Mountain Barbecue, Alberta barbecue cuisine at its best. Grant, it's been a weird week since uh, you last were with us last week and you were going on about Jerome, they should trade him. Then the headlines in the paper, big feud with him and Brent Sutter. And, and then Eric Francis was uh, quoted in the paper, or he did an article in the paper saying it's uh, time, there's people interested. Uh, then out of Toronto, a big report saying uh, the Minnesota, or the Dallas Stars, pardon me, very interested in obtaining, uh, in obtaining Jerome. Simply Getting him back. Yeah, be because back. Te, uh, is it Tom Gaglardi, the, uh, yeah. the owner, who was also partnership with Jerome as they own the Kamloops Blazers together. So that seemed like a logical fit. But more and more, it looks like there is a possibility of Jerome leaving where you really, really couldn't get your head around that idea, maybe even last year. Yeah, I'm a little confused by all this. Uh, and if I go on too long, you stop me. Okay? I will. Because I have said for a long time, for two years, I think the Flames are two years too late in trading Jerome McGinley. I think they should have done this when they knew they weren't going to go anywhere, when they missed the playoffs, what, three seasons ago now. It's a no-brainer to get rid of him. It's not because he's not a good player anymore. It's a business decision. So I'm saying they should have done it before. Um, Jay Feaster, though, on the weekend said, it's a non-story. We're not trading him. What's with that? There's no list of teams that Jerome wants to go to. I can't believe the Flames are saying that. I am just surprised right now that the Flames aren't saying, yes, it's time. Now, they might not say that publicly, but they have to, Mike, behind the scenes. Would Dallas be the team? I don't know what team. I want to know where the best prospects are. Again, I'm sounding like a broken record, but Al Coates did this in 1995 when he knew he couldn't sign Joe Newendike. He had his scouts and his hockey people look around the NHL, find where the best can't-miss prospects are. The Dallas Stars had just... Um, well, not just, but the uh, summer before, spring before, drafted Jerome McGinley. They right. knew they wanted to target a guy like that. That's what I think the Flames have to do right now. It's amazing, though, to me, Mike, that four or five months ago, the two biggest stars in this city, in Calgary, were Henry Burris and Jerome McGinley. Now it looks like for sure Henry Burris is gone, and I wouldn't, we wouldn't be surprised if Jerome McGinley is gone. Their star has fallen down, and nobody, nobody in Calgary would be shocked or upset, I don't think, if Burris is gone, and I think fewer people now would be shocked if Jerome goes. Well, they love him. They love both these guys in this town, but uh, you, you're right, Grant. Their uh, stock has diminished. <clears throat> they, yeah, it has, so it's time to move on. When you can trade the likes of Wayne Gretzky, anybody can be traded, so it shouldn't be that big. It's interesting, though. I was reading on the net. Uh, they did the top 10 landing spots for Jerome McGinley, and I was going, Holy Christ, are you guys from the States out to lunch? Some of these deals did not make any sense. They thought Toronto, simply because we had a history of being fleeced by the, by the Leafs. That's true. And the guys that they wanted to give up, you know, uh, and I'm going. Well, would the Leafs give up like a Joe Colburn? I don't I mean, they weren't. No, they're talking about old guys on defense. Oh, no, see. Uh, and and no. guys that are injury prone. Like, Wouldn't that be a fit? See, if the, if the teams that give up the young prospect, like a Joe Colburn, sure. the Calgary kid or the Cochran Bears paw kid, whatever you want to call him, yeah. a guy like him, um, I just think it's time to get that to rebuild this franchise. It, it has to happen. Oh, man, they had everything. They had him going to Anaheim. They had him going to Boston. And they said, can you imagine him uh, with Horton and Lucic on a line? I said, Christ, they've already got Krejci on that line. I would never trade David Krejci for, uh, for a Jerome McGinley at this point in his career. No, I wouldn't either. But let me, uh, I wish our little friend here, Eric Francis, would show up because you remember <laughs> uh, beginning of the season when he did show up, he was saying, forget about the Jerome McGinley, they're not going to do it, it's a dumb idea, they got to have a guy that young kids can, or, uh, can be mentored. Yep. Well now, you see him on Hockey Night in Canada, yeah, I think for the first time it's got to happen, it's going to happen, <laughs> he has changed his mind, I wished he was here. He's like so, a woman. Yeah. <laughs> but don't you think it's time? Yep. And, it, and it's Mika Kiprasov, too. This team is just treading water. How long is that going to last? How long is our, our people in this city going to be enticed to go and pay the big bucks to watch this team? Well, and that's the whole thing, Brent. It's, it's, uh, you could spin your wheels. You can, you can 
watch in Edmonton finally go up past you and you keep going down, down, down. Unless, now Feaster is still, still cleaning up the mess that Daryl Sutter has left behind. I wonder if this is Feaster saying this. Because to me, if Jay Feaster is a good hockey person, and, can, and knows he's got to get better in two years, that he would do this. I'm wondering if this is an ownership thing. I don't know. I'm wondering it if, might that, be if that we can't. Like, they're stubborn. Yeah. He's, our, he's our boy. Yeah. You know, he, he repre he, like, like Lanny did in the 80s, like Farron did in the 90s, Jerome McGinley is the face of this franchise for the decade, and maybe the Flames ownership group can't bear Grant, not to have him around. And I love that because I hate the mercenary game. I hate guys uh, that just go from one team to the next, to the next, to the highest bidder, or they trade him just before playoffs to make a run, then he's with somebody else. There's no loyalty. You know, you can't identify with anybody. That's, but that's my old But Mike Hart. You're, yeah, you're talking like a I know I a, am. A like soft I'm, like a fan. Like this I'm is a, a business, damn I know it. it. It's a <laughs> business. Wake up and smell the roses. <laughs> Matt Sundin should have said, okay, yeah. trade me for the good of the team. Jerome McGinley should say, you know what? I love this team. I've been here since the spring of 1996. If I go, this team will be better off without me. That's what I think. Um, the hottest rumor right now, Grant. Hottest rumor right do, now. We both do this. <laughs> I'll tell you, mister. Uh, I'll tell you. Uh, uh, Kiprasov going to Tampa. Stevie Eisenman wants a goaltender, needs a goaltender. He's got all the firepower. Uh, obviously, they don't like what they have in goaltending right now. And that name keeps popping up. Again, okay, then, I, then what we have to do is find out who Tampa has as prospects. Who are the can't-miss NHL guys in their system? Ready to make the NHL now or next year. If Tampa has those players, and I'm going to look into that, Sure. then maybe that's it. Mike, here's something I, I've heard that, getting back to Burris and Iginla. Uh, besides the good business decisions to get rid of both guys, I've heard that a lot of the Stampeders have grown tired of listening to Henry Burris, seeing his act. Uh, good and bad and I've heard that there's some rumblings out of the Flames dressing room right now that maybe f the players the teammates are growing a little tired of the selfishness of a Jerome McGinley I've heard that it's only a rumor it's just interesting that these two stars in Calgary their stock both outside and inside their respective dressing rooms has fallen can utility be a poster can utility keep you up at night dreaming can utility put thoughts in your head? Depends on what you mean by utility. Introducing the new Porsche Cayenne and Cayenne S Hybrid. Lighter, more agile, more efficient. More Porsche than ever.